Dennis. I'm very honored to sit to a drumming music legend, Steve Smith. Thank you for taking your time. My here. pleasure. We are no. sorry. <laughs> no, go right ahead. We are at the NAM show. Or very close to it. Right across the street from Disneyland. Yes. In fact. Very exciting. <laughs> anyway, um, Steve is not only a drummer, drummer, but also a rock star. Ooh. <laughs> or vice versa. He also knows what the rock and roll of fame looks like from inside. I guess that's true to a certain degree. Yes. Congratulations. Right, to thank, you. thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Um, you are one of these uh, genius all-around drummers who's able to play many different styles, American styles, as you call it yourself. Yes. And also, you, you master the Indian language of drumming, if you can call it that. Conical, it's yeah. called. Yes. South, it's the South Indian verbal expression of rhythms using syllables. Yes. You're good at that. And you're good at passing on your knowledge. You are a top educator with um, great educational DVDs and books. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and uh, talking about knowledge, let's first find out some basics about Steve Smith in case you don't know anything about him. Stephen Smith, and my age right now, 2017, 63 years old. Born in Brockton, Massachusetts, near Boston, uh, now living in New York City and Ashland, Oregon. So I go coast to coast to the U.S. I'm in Journey and also Vital Information, NYC edition, my own group. Played the drum set and for many years I played the piano in my high school and college years and um, for the last few years I have not been playing the piano. My forte on the kit, I would say an embodiment of US music. So the styles that have developed over the last 100 years in the USA. Well, I endorse various companies. I don't know exactly they endorse me, but I endorse Sonar Drums and Zildjian Cymbals, Remo drum heads, Vic Firth Sticks, and um, DW Pedals, um, Simpad, Cymbal Optimizers, and Pure Sound Snare Wires. That would be Gene Krupa. And my parents had some Benny Goodman albums and um, Gene Krupa was a drummer and just loved what I heard on those albums. Well, both. I took a lot of lessons. Um, well, from the very beginning, I started at nine years old with a teacher, studied uh, with him for, from the time I was nine until 17 and went to Berkeley. And, College of Music and study with Alan Dawson and Gary Chafee, but I think there's somewhat of a misconception about student versus self-taught because everyone that becomes a great musician is self-taught. The process of how to learn how to play music is something that only you can learn in the process of playing music, but having some help learning the mechanics of how to play the instrument is extremely helpful and so this combination of both really to me is is the optimum and, and optimum and it's usually the truth about most people even if people have never taken lessons at they may have some kind of exceptional circumstances that they grew up in in a very musical family or in a musical environment and then eventually as they get involved in playing music their peers and other bandmates become their teachers, whether they know it or not. I love the sound of the drums in the parade bands. And I remember being about five or six years old and hearing 
parade bands and loved the sound of the bass drum and the snare drum. And, and between that and the Gene Krupa records, that led me to want to play the drums. Well, uh, the path of playing music as a way of life is a great life. And so I enjoy being a musician and playing the drums is, is what I do best and it's a great way to express my musicianship and, and just a way to be in the world. A very wide range of music um, mostly, I listen to the jazz, different eras of jazz music from the most modern, uh, newest albums by really a lot of the, the great jazz, young jazz drummers from Eric Harlan to Mark Giuliana and um, Kendrick Scott. And they all happen to be great drummers and actually quite excellent writers as well. So I'm enjoying. Uh, listening to their newest projects, as well as just the history of jazz. But I'll listen to everything, really, all kinds of music. Currently, I'm working on um, preparing for the next tour with Journey. And in, in the 2017 tour, we're at various venues, we're going to be playing the Escape and Frontiers albums in their entirety. So I'm learning, uh, relearning those songs, but playing them in that sequence and getting used to the tempo changes and, and what it requires to play a seamless show with all that music. Um, also staying in shape with my Indian music explorations and um, later this year, uh, the journey tour ends in the middle of July and from the middle of July towards the end of the year, I'll be touring with my own group. So I have a new album coming out with Vital Information NYC edition and uh, we'll be playing that music while on tour for the rest of 2017. I, I do a lot of reading, um, like to watch movies, and um, I'm into yoga. I would say I don't really have a life motto. <laughs> no. I could make one up. Let's see, I try, try to stay centered and relax, enjoy the day, and put in the time for what it is that I'm currently working on, and have as much fun as I can in the process. So we are back, uh, you know a little bit more about Steve and now we're getting serious. I'm very interested in, in one thing, in yes. how to, to focus. I think um, over the years uh, you, you've, um, you never stopped to, to be curious, to get, to get better as a drummer, to get more versatile and for that I think you must be very focused. So I was wondering how do you do it, how do you focus, how do you get work done? behind the drum set. Sure. Well, I'd say the, the one thing that inspires me the most is having some kind of a gig coming up. And uh, of course that wasn't true at the very beginning. At the very beginning when I was young and starting out, um, I did have a drum teacher. So my focus then was practicing the lesson and then I would have my weekly lesson and I'd want to do a good job because I respected what my teacher Bill Flanagan would say. Mm -hmm. So so that that idea of preparation and then with an end result probably started in those years of uh, my early drum lessons. And, and at this point and over the last 30 or 40 years it's been okay I have a gig coming up mm -hmm. and now I need to prepare and that can be l lots of different situations where I have to learn exact tunes you know where I know I know what the music is so I put in the time to develop that music and, and it depends on how long I have sometimes if I know I have a gig and it's a it's a month away I usually get started pretty early on to, to learn the music because I find 
a slow assimilation of the music gives me a lot more comfort while I'm on the gig than a last minute cramming. And so I start with just, let's, for instance, like I, about three years ago, I was doing a lot of subbing for Simon Phillips, playing with Hiromi. And her music is extremely difficult, a lot of odd time signatures. And she would send me her new album along with the charts. And I knew I'd have, let's say, a month to learn the entire album. Well, I would just learn a little bit of one or two of the songs every day because some the songs they might be 10 pages long it would be too long to even learn the entire tune at one sitting so i would just learn parts of it and then go over that and and i guess what i've learned about focus is that i need to s stay focused as as long as i can in a day but when i start to lose it i stop and 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 then go come back the next day and the next day so th Really, one of the main points is to learn incrementally, little at a time, over a long period of time, and not expect instant results. And so I slowly get results. And um, I just, I'm methodical about putting in the time. It doesn't mean that I don't occasionally take a day off in the week, but I generally work on music six days a week at least okay. and and even if it's one hour you know or usually it's not more than three or four ever but but it's that daily time daily focus <clears throat> that I get the best results and I so I can apply that to anything <clears throat> in the music so once I decided I wanted to learn conical which is the South Indian vocal language I just put in 10 or 15 minutes a day at first just a little bit and I but I trusted the process because I've been involved in that process for so many years I knew that it would work so I, I just tried to stay relaxed about it and of course I get frustrated like anyone you know occasionally but most of the time I try not to because I know if I just keep this process going, I will get a good end result. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's now it's the same with preparing for the 2017 Journey Tour. I'm working on Escape and Frontiers, relearning a lot of those songs that some of them we never ever, ever played live. That okay. Certain album tracks, even in the 80s, we never played them. So we're all, you know, we're all learning them. But in a situation like that, I, I over-prepare. So I, I learn the songs, I play through maybe all the songs we're going to play on tour every day, uh -huh. and which is a, a lot of music. And when I say over-prepare, we'll, most of the time we'll never play that many tunes in one night. Mm -hmm. But I get to the point where I can play them real easily. I know them inside and out. And then I just start to improvise with them, okay. just for fun, okay. and just to keep my chops up, and just to make sure that I'm, I'm going to be prepared physically for when I get there, because the demands of a two-hour rock show, you know, are pretty intense. So I, I get over prepared. So by the time I'm there on stage, it's pretty easy for me, mm -hmm. versus <laughs> like I'm pushed to my edge. And is it more difficult if it when it's easy? Is it more difficult to focus because you played it? Yeah, it's it's yeah. While I'm on stage, then it's very easy to focus because I'm right there in the present moment with okay. everyone. And 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 that, in a lot of ways, is the, really the pull of why people want to do music. I think mm -hmm. is because they get the experience of being in the present moment. Mm -hmm. And, and just being right there, right now. And, and it dip, then it, there's a lot of varying concepts of what it is that you're trying to do. When I'm playing with Journey, playing a rock show, that's more like, um, say, a Broadway musical, where the, 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 the music is written and I'm performing it at a high level so that people have a good experience. And, and we have a good experience, but the concept is not improvisation. Mm -hmm. the, the concept is playing music yeah. and and playing it in a way like classical music or, or where it's pre-composed and bringing new life to it. 
each night. So th there's a certain challenge and focus to that. Mm -hmm. Where on the other side, if I'm playing jazz music or Indian music, there's a lot of improvisation in involved. So that, that's a very different kind of concept and still putting on a show, a good show for the people to experience, but a big part of that is the communication and exploration of the improvisation with the other musicians within the confines of what the music is and what the concept is, whether it's a straight ahead acoustic group in a jazz club in New York or a fusion band like Hiromi with a lot of odd time signatures and we have that okay. those boundaries but you know we're still creating within that you know th those confines so but the the focus I think once I've done that homework to, to find it on stage comes easily okay. when I see you sit behind the drum set you seem very uh, you sit up very straight and you're very yes. controlled you do yoga or meditation that and that's, help you to that's, yeah that's that's part of it though though the good posture and the and the good technique on the drums is also as a result of studying mm. good technique mm. on the on the drums it, itself and even though I have been doing yoga for pretty seriously for about six or seven years I think at this point I was on to the good drum technique long before that so my studies with um, Freddie Gruber were probably the final key to really honing in on really good posture and seat height and hand and foot technique and integrating all of that together mm -hmm. and then the yoga reinforces that okay. But also my drumming in some ways helps me with the yoga too because okay. I have a lot of experience with working on fine points and details mm -hmm. and then I can uh, easily m put that into my yoga practice where if I'm doing a downward facing dog it might look the same as I did it two years ago but now there's a lot more internally going on. Okay. You know, so the details continue okay. <laughs> in all the various disciplines. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. One more question. Yes. Uh, also about focus uh, in a different part um, when on a downfall like when you were kicked out of journey in 1985 yes you could have been devastated uh, but you turned something bad into something good you got up again so what what do you think it's good to focus on when you're down on the on the floor well, and that it was very devastating at first when when that happened in 1985, and I I had to take a, a look at what the issues were, and part of the issues were just the youth of all of us in in the stress of the environment. Mm -hmm. But that but that's not it entirely. There were some you know, some legitimate issues with, with my drumming at that time. So at that time, nineteen eighty five, up until that moment I had never played with a click track and none of the journey albums were made with click tracks. Mm -hmm. And nobody really made albums with click tracks before then, and that's when drum computers and sequence keyboards started to become popular. So that, at that moment, musicians had to be able to interface with with um, with the machines, with the computers. So I had to learn how to do that. So I just took on that task, mm -hmm. <laughs> and 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 got focused and did it mm -hmm. because it was not just that I was having trouble doing it with Journey it was that's the direction of the music business in a way okay. you know as far as a certain part of the music business like pop recording mm -hmm. so I, I I think I've always been inspired to want to push myself through areas where I'm having issues where mm -hmm. I'm in trouble and so that was one of them. So I just confronted the issue just head on and um, 
got some software and programmed some keyboard and bass parts and learned mm -hmm. how to play along with them. Got a mm -hmm. got a metronome <laughs> and started to practice with the metronome. Got a metronome in 1985. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that easy to get one you could hear in those days because they went like that yeah. on the top, you yes. know. Was the, but um, but I just got you know I didn't. I definitely got depressed, but I didn't want to stay in that in that space. And also, you know, and, and the other side of it was, um, I enjoyed playing with Journey in those years, but it was never my intention to be in a rock band for my entire career. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, maybe like Charlie Watts with the Rolling Stones mm -hmm. or something like that. That was never my conception. So. I always uh, considered myself more of a jazz musician, mm -hmm. and so I took the opportunity to also to say, okay, now I'm just going to get focused on playing jazz music. And so you, you, you didn't have to learn how to play to a click, but you did it anyway. Actually, I, uh, I did because um, a lot of jazz m music is played with clicks and sequencers, and at, and at the time, 1985 is, is when I got kicked out of Journey in 1986, I started playing with Steps Ahead. Mm -hmm. And right away, they were using clicks and sequencers. Okay. So a lot of jazz groups went that way in those years, and people still rely on that mm -hmm. in some ways, mm -hmm. whether live or in the studio. So, you know, that really became, in, in, in a way, an, an ultimate form of challenge playing with the click is to play very free and very loose and improvise and create in the moment with mm -hmm. the other musicians and still be able to do it with a click track which mm -hmm. now I'm entirely comfortable with and I was probably you know in a in a couple of years mm -hmm. a couple of years is what it took to really uh, be very comfortable with that mm -hmm. okay thank you so much my pleasure um, before we go yes. uh, to the NAMM show and before you watch something else maybe, uh, check out Steve Smith's stuff. This year uh, he's with Sonar for 40 years. That's right. This is the, yeah, I started in 1977 playing and endorsing Sonar drums. That's when I was born. Okay. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so this year they presented me with a, a 40th anniversary snare drum and then as we you know discussed the idea of that drum uh, since I started in 1977 they decided to make 77 drums so it's a limited edition um, drum beautiful wood wood drum similar to the vintage drum mm -hmm. with the beechwood uh, shell and the um, so you have to be yeah. quick to get one of yes. those. Yes. Uh, but uh, what you have more time with is to get some new sticks, big first sticks, signature sticks. Well, those sticks that, that you saw, and yeah. I'll give you a pair of those, those are the sticks that will come with the snare drum. Oh, because it says only that. 40th anniversary, okay. you know, Sonar and Steve Smith and celebrate 40 years. Okay. So that pair of sticks will come with that drum. Okay, so there's only 77 pairs of That's sticks right. too. <laughs> so you have to be quick then. Uh, but there's uh, a book. No, there's a new book, and that's also limited. Well, there's two two books: the Pathways of Motion. That's a book on Hudson music. It's a book and a DVD, and that's an educational mm -hmm. book and DVD. It's about match grip playing, mm -hmm. and and so that's details. Lots of details of various ways to play match grip because match grip isn't as simple as just like one way to do it mm -hmm. you know in fact i described four ways one two three and four actual different ways of holding the sticks and then they can be symmetrical or non-symmetrical and mix and match like traditional grip playing mm -hmm. is a non-symmetrical grip a lot of reasons to investigate each one and spend time with each one mm -hmm. to, so you can have a lot of choices while you play and the other one? The other book is, well, you'd have to go to the website, stevesmithdrumart.com. Mm -hmm. And it's a book of my artwork, along with an LP vinyl record of 14 drum solo pieces. Mm -hmm. That's a hardcover, limited edition book, 250 copies with the, with the art and the music. 
the art. It's a photographer who took pictures of you playing uh, in the dark. Yes, I'm playing in a darkened room with lighted sticks with time-lapse photography, mm -hmm. which creates shapes and interesting, this interesting looks. That I did a couple of years ago, and we put the art on canvas, and it's it's been an interesting new thing to do. Okay. And when they came up with the idea to put all the art in a book, that's when I said, what about if I play a solo for each piece? There's 13 pieces of art, 14 solos, because one of the pieces of art I had part one and part two, mm -hmm. so two different ideas. So I recorded them both, and so it's basically in seven tunes aside, 22 minutes of music on each side of the LP, so it's a lot. That sounds special. It's pretty cool. <laughs> a very different drum book <laughs> art. So check it out. Yeah, thank you again. My pleasure. For time. All right. And thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>